ти подмоле. Јас имам уште време, уште еден сад. За тоа време може да се фатат три пастанки. Јанка ќе биде за дово. A man in uniform, a man who is speaking, is Petra Mihalovsky. He just said, the three o'clock train is leaving Podmoli. I still have an hour. One hour. That's about three more trout. Yanka will be happy. Yanka is his mother. She'll be happy about the trout in his sack. Petra works for the railroad, which explains his uniform. The uniform is more impressive than the train. But impressive or not, for the local people, it's the only train. They would have to see others to judge this one, and around here they never have known any others. Petra Mihalovsky is going to make the evening run on the Orid Express. He has time and doesn't like to hurry. Petra knows how to live. He takes it easy, and when from his train he sees this tiny corner of Yugoslavia, he feels very happy. Petra looks and listens. The play of sunlight, the clattering of the carts, the russets and greens following the train all year long. These are the things that make Petra's day. regret. He would like to be a fisherman and spend the whole day on the water. He's not a fisherman because his mother, Yanka, having spent her whole life as a peasant, did not want him to be one. Petra, her oldest son, would be an administrator, and so he is. Petra doesn't complain. He envies his brother Marco, who is a fisherman, but their mother no longer bears a peasant's burden. На ова место топол ветер дува и сливите се тука да ја ублажат летната горештина. Работите се добро направени. Петра is saying that life here is very good. When the hot wind blows, there are plums to quench your thirst. They ripen just when needed to relieve the summer heat. There are three trains each day on this line. From Presek to Orid, 60 kilometers in three hours. The afternoon train carries wood from the mountains to the mine. Sacks of grain, too, during the harvest season. It's a long run and the load is heavy. His friend Nicola likes the afternoon run. He is a rugged fellow. When the train is too heavily loaded to pass over a steep grade, Nicola loves the process of backing up, detaching some cars and going forward again. Some people like extra problems. Not Petra, though. He prefers the evening train which carries passengers. He's good-natured and loves people. He's not interested in their politics or religion. He likes to watch people to see how they live and what they're doing. He knows that Savka Doniva is going to show off her newborn baby to her parents, now living in Galiknik. He knows that the Petrovskis every year harvest their barley before everyone else. He knows, the passenger told him. He heard that in other parts of Yugoslavia, grain is milled in enormous machines quickly and efficiently. Petra thinks about this every time he sees the animals moving round and round. He knows that progress has come to other places more quickly than here. He doesn't like to think about this. In other places, there is greater need. 
They get along all right here. Petra gets up and sees the people of his village going about their daily tasks. A phrase comes back to him again and again. In other places, it is different. Is it bad that women go about their daily chores? Is it bad that their children are always near them or in their arms? Is it bad that men make a living by fishing on the lake instead of working at machines? Machines do things more quickly, but why go more quickly? Is time in a hurry? And what are we to do with the extra time machines make for us? It's for this reason he would like to have been a fisherman. Time passes all by itself when you're fishing. There's no need to get impatient. That's what he loves about fishing. Time passes without the help of machines. What machine could dry tobacco better than the sun? What machine could take care of the laundry better than the water of the lake? He knows these people take great pride in wearing their best clothes on Sundays. He knows the women take great pride in the shirts they make for their husbands and children. There's nothing better than lake water for these shirts. When the washing begins, the backs of the women are supple as they prepare the fire to boil water. Later, spines grow weary bending under the weight of the heavy cloth. Petra's passengers tell him that in other places women don't work this hard. He knows that there are even some who don't work at all. Here the women are healthy and strong. They manage the laundry and their other work as it should be. They do women's work and everything goes well. Elsewhere in the north, where there are machines, women's work has changed. It's their right. But here, it's another story. Whether the fishing is good or bad, whether or not the tobacco and corn harvests are plentiful, there is always the sun and water of the lake to make things seem all right. Petra says these problems don't concern him. He doesn't worry about the future of the country, nor what will become of the children who live near the lake. Will they be fishermen like Marco? Will they be farmers like the rest of his family? These are the things which Petra doesn't like to think about. Things will continue as they are, and when they change, it will be tomorrow, or even after tomorrow, but never the same day, or so it seems. Orid is the station where Petra starts his work. He hears the train coming into the station and knows he can't linger anymore. The evening run, the conductor's orders, a glance at the engine he knows so well. This concerns Petra. In other places, they have more modern equipment. At Skopje and Belgrade, he has seen some. 
It amuses them to ask the age of his engine. It dates from 1895. He knows their amused smile and condescending manner. He sees the way they make fun of him, and he doesn't like it. He has often dreamed of running a real train between Bitola and Skopje, passing through Orid. A real train with tracks running off to infinity. A train is something which concerns Petra. He would like that to change quickly. Not tomorrow, though. At this moment, he feels almost enough courage to want the progress of other places to come to this corner of Macedonia. He knows that it's possible. Once again, he sees passing before his eyes the lives of men and women from his home. And now he no longer envies even his brother Marco pulling in his nets on the lake. Now everything becomes calm and simple for Petra. Things will continue as they are, and if they change, it will be tomorrow.